Welcome to the Ignited Life Now podcast. Here's my daddy, Pastor Benjamin Faircloth. Hello friends, this is Pastor Benjamin Faircloth from Ignited Church in Livonia, Georgia, and I want to welcome you to Ignited Life Now. It is my pleasure and my honor to be with you today and to speak plainly from my heart and tell you this, you are blessed coming in, going out in the city and in the field. Man, God has a wonderful plan for you, regardless of what's going on in our world and our life right now. The Father has not fallen asleep because he never sleeps and he never slumbers. The Father knows exactly where you are right now, and he has a plan, a plan to prosper you, to keep you in health even as your soul prospers. Man, that is good gospel news in a world that has seemingly gone off the cliff. It's gone mad. Insanity rules the day, but it's great to know that our Father hasn't changed. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He is God Almighty, and he's still upon his throne. He is wide awake. His ear is open to the cry of the righteous. His arm is not too short that it cannot save. He has us in the palm of his hands because we are the apple of his eyes. I don't know about you. that This is just good, good, good news for me today. And I love you, and I love the Word of God. And I love being a part of this podcast and coming into your home, your life, wherever you may be today on this people planet, I am honored to be with you, and I appreciate you and your prayers. Well, as you know, we've changed the format. Uh, we've gone from now praiser into uh, really working on our website, if you will, getting things set up there and, and working on some other platforms. So I want to speak to that real quick. I want to speak to uh, the changes that are taking place. One thing about changes and one thing about being flexible, it will produce stability in your life if you can just learn how to go with the flow. Let me say it again. If you'll just be flexible, when changes come to your life, you can be stable. So flexibility produces stability. And we need to do that in this day because so many things are changing and life is changing and uh, we're going from normal to abnormal. So we have to overcome. We just have to adapt and say, you know what? I'm going to be okay because the greater one lives inside of me. So uh, as you know, we're no longer on Praiser because Praiser has changed their format. And I ask for you to pray for Pastor Rick and the True News team and the Praiser team. There are some exciting things coming down the road for that ministry, uh, which will include Ignited Church and Ignited Life Podcast and, and other ministries. So I'm very excited about it. Uh, even though it's a, it, it is a change, we just have to overcome. We're just going to have to to make a way and uh, walk in the new flow of the Spirit of God. And so having said that, as we are no longer on Praiser, or Praiser is no longer available as far as teaching and preaching, uh, but I want to encourage you, continue to support them. Continue to uh, listen to the music there. Use that outreach tool. It is a wonderful outreach tool. Uh, This is, you know, what they've done is not a punishment to anybody or considered negative. It's just something they needed to do. It was a command decision, uh, and I think it was a wise decision, uh, though I love the platform. Don't get me wrong, uh, but I understand that when you are in ministry, uh, and you're, it's like a business, and you have to make business decisions, and I think Pastor Rick did the, did the right thing, and uh, I think down the road we'll see something uh, even better than uh, what Praiser was concerning teaching and and preaching. So, uh, yeah, don't give up on them. Love them, bless them, support them, pray for them. But what it's doing is causing us now to focus more on our website. And so we're putting our ministry content. Obviously, you're listening to me now from our website. And uh, we're going to have three different sections that are really easy for you to navigate and and to get to. And, And basically, we're going to have my preaching which is the sermons. We're going to have the podcast. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, you know, the teachings for Wednesday night. That's kingdom teaching. And we just have a great time doing that. I, I get to minister in a different uh, vein, if you will, more of a teaching atmosphere, kind of a laid back uh, with my Wednesday night core and, and uh, wonderful church members there at Ignited. And so uh, I want to encourage you to 
get on our website uh, as you are now and just scroll through, navigate, get to those places and give me just a little time to get these things up and running the way that we want to do it. So uh, comment, if you will, on this new format. I think it's going to be a whole lot easier. It's kind of a library playlist type of format that's going to be, uh, again, just simple to get to. And one thing about one thing about websites is you really want to make it easy for people. And I never like going to a website that's confusing and uh, real busy. So hopefully we don't have that uh, in our website, but we're working to make it much, much better. Also, we have something else going on in the future. Uh, I just don't want to say anything about it right now because then I'll be asked, you know, when's it going to be done? When's it going to be done? And it's out of my hands. All I can tell you is it's being approved right now. And once we get the green light, then we, we're going to release this, this tool, if you will, that's really going to help Ignited Church expand and uh, get into more places uh, than we can with just our website. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And so I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. You know who you are, those that are able to sow financially. I love you and I appreciate you. If all you can do is pray, man, thank you for your prayers. Your prayers are greater than the weight of gold, really, because if you pray for me, God makes new avenues to, to cause us to be blessed. And so um, we're not a money-hungry or money-seeking ministry. Uh, ministry never follows money. Money follows ministry. In other words, if I sow into the kingdom and I'm doing what God's called me to do, then he'll supply my needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He'll raise up people. He'll bless people just to be a blessing. Did you know that? Did you know that there's paymasters, there's people within the kingdom that God has supernaturally funded and financed and blessed and prospered and given them the anointing to make money? He's, he's raised these paymasters up because he knows he can trust them. Listen, if God can get it through you, he can get it to you. Listen to that. If God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. What is that? Anything. If he can get money through you, if he can trust you, if you're faithful and you love God and you don't have hangups about giving, he'll get money to you because he knows he's going to get it through you. If you're the same way about assets for the kingdom of God, he'll find a way to get it to you so you can start giving it out. Amen. That's a powerful, powerful kingdom truth. And we're going to see more of that in these last days. It's going to produce great blessings in the kingdom. It's actually going to take us back to the book of Acts where they all held things common. They were all common in their mindset. What does that mean? That means they had one mind, one accord, one purpose, one heart, one spirit, one vision, and that was to see the kingdom of God and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled on the earth, and it didn't matter what it took, they were going to get it done. Man, that's great, great gospel news to me because that's, that answers all of our problems. Do you see that? That answers all of our problems. If you have a need, then God will supply it. And then as he supplies your need, you supply the need to somebody else. And, and it just begins to network and a family and a body begins to rise up uh, that is functional, that is faithful. And uh, nobody's lacking and nobody's wanting. Didn't say you're going to be a multimillionaire. And that's not the purpose of the kingdom. That's not the purpose of networking. The purpose is souls. Souls, And so uh, I just want to encourage you, man, keep giving, keep praying, keep supporting. Your work is not in vain. God is going to reward you and he's going to bless you. And not only here on earth, but in heaven, man, when we get to heaven, we're going to see people. They're going to run up to us and say, man, thank you for giving to the Lord. Or the Lord Jesus Christ is going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Man, those are the words that I'm looking forward to. Those are the words that I am dreaming about and praying and meditating about just to hear that I've done well with the things that God has given me. I want to be a blessing on this earth and I want to receive my blessing in heaven. And I know you will and I know we will together. Listen, on this podcast, uh, again, some information about the website. I want to share with you uh, the vision, the vision of World Outreach Ministries International and Ignited Church. Most of you are more familiar with Ignited Church. Uh, if you spend time on, on my website, you can find some information about World Outreach Ministries International. 
And, and I wanted to share some of this to encourage you and to let you know where we're going for the future because we are going somewhere. Despite what's taking place in the world today, despite the prophetic fulfillment of not only prophecies from prophets and watchmen and seers, but prophetic fulfillments of the word of God, regardless of those things, we are at the right time, at the right place, because we're in the kingdom for such a time as this. You and I, right now, regardless of the chaos, regardless of all the insanity that's taking place, you and I have been positioned and planted by God to be born in this time period, to be right here alive on this people planet. You could have been born in any other generation, but God chose you and God chose me to be right here, right now. And since God is not a God of chaos and disorder, but he's a God of tranquility and he's a God of order, he already planned for you and I to be positioned in this moment, equipped and able to handle everything thrown at us and against us. Man, I'm going to tell you something. God is not caught off by what's going on in the world. He's not caught off guard, if you will. He's not caught uh, off sleeping or in a corner somewhere, not aware of what's taking place in our nation. He has, he has fully, fully, fully uh, prepared us for this hour and I'm going to tell you something, when I think about that, when I think about that God is in control, that God is on his throne, that the Father has a plan for me, the Father has a plan for us as a body, I'm going to tell you something, I can face the next day. I can face the chaos. I can face the crisis. And I can face uncertainty because my God is a stable father. My Lord, our creator, the lover of our soul. Come on, Jesus, the Christ, the Lord of all. He is stable and able to bless us beyond our imaginations in spite of what's taking place. So I, I said all that to, to bring you to this point of vision. Because we're in chaos, vision doesn't go away. Let me make this clear because there's a lot of people who just want to hide in a bunker and they just want to, you know, give up and, and, and go underground already and, and just, you know, throw up the white flag, if you, if you will, and get raptured out of here and all these different things. I am supposed to occupy till he comes. Occupy till he comes is a military term. I'm supposed to, if you will, uh, hunker down in my position, not in a position of, of retreat, not in a position of, of uh, being uh, stale, if you will, or just you know, being stagnant. No, no, I'm to hunker down. I'm supposed to, to lock down in the reality and the revelation that my God has a plan for us in these final hours, that I'm to be mobile. I'm to go into the front lines. I'm to go into the enemy's camp. I'm not supposed to just hang out in a trench, if you will, but I'm supposed to be fun fun uh, focused and just functioning in the things of God in this last day. That's the plan and purpose of God for me. And so, uh, occupy, occupy till I come. Hold the fort, if you will. Hold the fort. But remember, this fort is mobile. This kingdom is mobile. I'm holding the truths. I'm holding the word of God. I'm holding to the reality of consecration, of holiness, and faith, and prayer, and fasting, and pleading the blood, and, and, and the word of God being uh, perfect, and all these attributes of the things of the kingdom. I'm to hold these truths in a front, forward, front line type of attitude. In other words, I'm not going back for nobody. I'm not going to go hide somewhere with these truths and not let them out in this hour. And so as I move forward in ministry and we move forward in the prophetic clock and the prophetic reality and the prophetic vision, don't give up on God. Just don't throw everything to the wayside. Don't throw the doctrines of the truth of the word away because you see everything crashing down. I'm still going to build what God called me to build. Now, it may look different than I thought. It may take different structure and formation than, than uh, when I first realized it or received the vision. But the good gospel news is this 
that God will finish his work until the day of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? He will finish it. He is the author and the finisher of my faith. And so uh, I don't dog and, and, and negate and just, you know, say all kinds of evil manner to people and ministries that are trying to move forward in this hour. I bless them. Man, if you want to build something in this hour, go build it. Unless the Father tells you don't. Uh, you know, my only problem I have with a lot of ministries in this hour is they're not taking care of their own church. They're not taking care of their people. They're not preparing them for the end times, and yet they're building bigger fellowship halls, or they're doing this or doing that. Yeah, I got an issue with that. But man, if you're seeking God and you've been warning your people, and God says build, if he says put the cornerstone down on the ground and start building on that truth, I say go for it because we're not going in retreat. We are moving forward. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. What do you mean? Listen, gates don't have feet. Gates don't move beyond their position. So the church must move towards the gates of hell, bust them bad boys down, and move into enemy-held territory. And so that's what we're doing in this ministry, and I'm not backing up. And so I want to share this vision with you. World Outreach Ministries International was birthed in 1995. Uh, that's when it was incorporated. That's when we began to uh, just step out into uh, kingdom affairs and kingdom ministry. But really, the vision began in 1993 when I was at World Harvest Bible College, and my pastor, Pastor Rod Parsley, uh, in, in school there, you know, it was such a powerful, powerful move of God with the anointing and revelation and vision. And in that time, I received the vision for World Outreach Ministries International that we would reach the world with every form and fashion of gospel tools and weapons. I mean, printed page, media outlets, uh, world travels, church planting, just any way we possibly could to see the gospel of Jesus Christ and the kingdom manifested throughout the earth. And so in my two years, really it was about two and a half years I spent there in ministry and as, as an employee, uh, my wife and I, we just received this download of what we were going to do for Jesus Christ. And one of the aspects of ministry that this is really the banner of World Outreach Ministries uh, and Ignited Church is the Lord spoke to our hearts and he placed within us the reality of winning five million souls to Jesus Christ. Five million souls to Jesus Christ. And over the years, we've seen multiplied thousands born again into the kingdom of God. I don't have a soul counter, so I don't know how many souls have been born again since the time I received this revelation. But I'm going to tell you something. I won't be satisfied until Jesus comes. I won't be satisfied with any number. But five million souls was, was a, 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 a number that was placed within our spirits. And we have, we have moved forward towards that. We have pressed towards that vision. We've pressed towards that mark every single day since receiving that vision. And again, I don't know the number, but I don't need to know the number. That is my goal and vision from heaven to reach 5 million souls. And I pray it's multiplied by 10. I pray it's multiplied by 100. Uh, I'm not going to limit God, but at the minimum, at the minimum, we're going to see 5 million souls born again in the kingdom of God. So World Outreach Ministries is a, is a missions ministry. We've gone to over 17 nations of the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've been a part of church planting. We've been a part of feeding programs overseas, medical outreach, uh, you know, financial outreach. Uh, we've we've uh, been a blessing to, to multiply hundreds of pastors and, and church leaders, leadership and bishops and laymen just loving them and encouraging them and telling them that you can do this. And one of the things we've always told them, it's not about American money. It's not about America. It's about Jesus Christ and the kingdom. And what happens in one nation can happen in another. And that is an important uh, point to make to those who live overseas. Don't focus on us. 
Don't focus on the power of the dollar. Focus on the power of faith and the word of God that is within you. And so World Outreach Ministries International has been doing that. We've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and doing these things again for one reason, not for my name to be, you know, just placed everywhere on the planet. I don't want you to remember my name. I really don't. I, if you forget my name, that's perfectly fine as long as you remember the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all that matters to me and my wife, Jennifer. We're not interested in fame. We're not interested in fortune. We're not interested in anything that man can give us because anything man gives you, he can take from you. But whatever God gives you, no man can take from you. And so we live by that that philosophy, if you will, we, we live by that commission and understanding within our heart. And so 5 million souls were pressing towards that mark and we're believing God to see that happen. And so World Outreach Ministries International, it was birth. We, we've done these things uh, for the kingdom of God. And then Ignited Church was birthed out of World Outreach Ministries International. And, and we, we call it short WOMI. WOMI is, is the covering, if you will, of Ignited Church. And so Ignited Church here in America, uh, our vision, again, it is 5 million souls, but we are a New Testament church speaking prophetically to our city, state, nation, and the world. That's what we are. We are a New Testament church. What do you mean by that? That means we operate in the fullness of the gifts of God. We operate in the totality of everything Jesus said we can do and we can have. We operate in the reality that we're finishing all that he began to teach and to do according to the book of Acts. And we operate in the reality that we are Acts chapter 2 part 2. In other words, we're going to fulfill the Great Commission. We are the final generation that will bring in the end time harvest and will see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that process, we're going to preach the truth. We're going to preach it hot. We're going to preach it loud. We're going to preach it to every single person who would listen to the sound of our voice. And we will use every single media outreach possible in order for this to take place. Again, I'm not building a media dynasty. I'm not building something uh, that will point arrows to me. I am building something for the kingdom that will affect souls, that will affect destiny, that will affect eternity, and will plunder hell to populate heaven. Man, I love when Reinhard Bonnke says that because that's the truth. We are going to plunder hell to populate heaven heaven. And that should be the uh, goal of all ministries and all people who love Jesus Christ. So Ignited Church was birthed out of that world missions view. And we have that same uh, fervency here in our city. We have that same fervency uh, in the nations. And we're not, we, we're not giving up. We're still focusing on world missions. Now, I have been led by the Father to stay home. I've been on a two-year uh, sabbatical, if you will, from overseas travel, but we haven't kept money uh, here in the States. In other words, we're still sowing into to ministries in, in different parts of the nations. We're still sowing to see uh, bodies taken care of, to see uh, lives changed, bellies that are hungry, to be fed medicine, church planting, all the aspects of the kingdom. We are watching it take place not necessarily with feet on the ground by us, but by seed placed into missionaries' hands, pastors, leaders, so that this gospel can be preached to the ends of the earth. Then, then Jesus will come. Man, what a great mandate and mission and vision, vision from heaven to preach this gospel to the ends of the earth, and then Jesus comes. Hallelujah. So Ignited Church is doing that. Uh, I don't know when I'll be released to go back to the nations of the earth. I have no idea. I know it stirs in my heart every day. I have, a, I have an incredible love for the nation of Cuba and the people. We still have contacts there. We still minister uh, financially when, when we're able to and just be a part of that uh, great outreach that's taking place down there. But I don't know. I have no idea when I'll be released, but I know that the Father has a plan. And when he says go, I'm gone. 
I will be doing uh, missions work again while we're pastoring, while we're doing everything here back and forth. Uh, my call is not a long-term missionary. My call is, is short-term. My call is to go to conferences, uh, feeding programs, uh, disasters, different things, and minister and, and bless those that are on the ground. That's what I want to do. I want to bless those that are already there, that know the language, that know their people and culture. We just help stir them up and get them on fire for Jesus Christ. So that's just a little vision there I wanted to give you uh, about World Outreach Ministries International and Ignited Church. We are pressing in we are pressing into the things of God. Let me read to you Habakkuk chapter two. I love this. Uh, Habakkuk chapter two, verse one says, I will stand upon my watch. I want you to see that my watch. You have a watch. I've got a watch. I can't do what someone else is doing. I'm not going to imitate somebody else. I'm not going to impersonate somebody else. I've got my watch and I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he shall say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. He said, I'm going to stand here. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to be in my position according to the word of God, and I'm going to listen to what God has to say. Look at verse two. And the Lord answered me. Notice that he answers. If you inquire of the Lord, he will answer you. It may not be right away. It may be tomorrow but it's coming. The answer's coming. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. What did the father say to do? Write the vision. You have to write the vision. You have to take pencil and paper and write down, thus saith the Lord. You have to write down. This is what I want you to do, my daughter, my son. These are the plans that I have for you. Write them down. Anybody who says they're called to ministry and doesn't have it on a piece of paper somewhere I doubt your call and vision from God because a true entrepreneur of the kingdom, listen, a true contractor, a true visionary, a true person who, who, who has been called by God writes it down. So many, so many people say, well, I heard, a, I had a vision from the Lord. I had a dream and uh, I don't remember it all because I didn't write it down. That's right. You didn't write it down. Well, it's in my heart. It's in my mind. God knows. No, honey, you have to write the vision down. If you're going to tell me what God's called you to do, you can't um, stutter, uh, well, you better be plain in your speech and speak that word because I'll never support anybody that can't tell me verbatim the vision that God has given them. So look at this. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and do what? Make it plain. Make it plain. If it's a vision from God, it'll be plain to understand. It'll be acceptable. In other words, listen, when you receive a vision, when I receive my vision for the ministry God has given me, I, I basically saw the end. I saw the explosion of ministry, the souls and, and the harvest and standing before multiplied thousands of people. I saw the end. I, I saw the climax, if you will, the height of the ministry, but I didn't know how to get there. In other words, it was it, there was a lot of things to take place, and I'm not there yet. And so I'm still traveling on this road of vision and dream and destiny. But I have to make it plain to those who want to know, where are you going? What are you doing, especially in this hour? And that's part of the reason for this podcast and really the reason for our media outreach is to share not only the gospel of Jesus Christ, but share where this ministry is going so you can help us get there. Verse two again, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Come on, you can't go somewhere if you have bad directions. If GPS isn't operating properly, you don't get to your destination. If somebody scribbled an address to you and left out key letters and key numbers, guess what? You're not going to get there. If you send an important letter to somebody and you leave out the state and the zip code, chances are high you're going to get that thing sent right back to you. Do you see that? And so vision must be plain. And look at verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. That's what I was talking about in verse 2. It's an appointed time. 
But at the end, it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So no matter what's going on in my life or ministry, no matter what's going on in the world today, if it is a vision from God, if it's a sure word, if it's a true word from God and you have written it down, you, you wrote it down and you made it plain, guess what? In the right time, in the right season, you are going to see it come to pass. And I believe for World Outreach Ministries International and for Ignited Church, we are on the precipice. We are right at the edge of seeing the fulfillment of great and mighty things in this ministry, in our lives, and in what God's called us to do. Right now, just in our jail ministry, and, and again, I don't have the exact number, but I can tell you we are near 400 salvations and rededications in our local jails since January of this year, 2016. I, I, can, I can verify to you that God is moving in our outreach here at Ignited Church over f at least 400. It could possibly be over that. Brother Mike, who is our chaplain, is doing a mighty work there in the two counties that he's a uh, uh, part of in the jail system there. And I cannot, I cannot tell you how blessed we are to, number one, have a great worker like that, but to have a church who prays and believes and supports chaplain ministries in jail. Because I'm going to tell you something, that is the place right there. That is where society needs help, I believe, the most because you can't go further than jail. You can't go any lower than that. And, you know, we can't go into every single house where crimes are being committed. We can't go into every single crack house. We can't go into every house of prostitution. We can't go into every single place where unrighteousness is taking place. But when they get caught, <laughs> when they get nabbed, if you will, when they get cornered, guess what? We've got the gospel net to save them. We've got a word in season that Jesus Christ loves them and has a plan for them. And no matter how far they go, they can't go far enough for God to not be able to reach them. And so uh, I'm just telling you these things to encourage you, to let you know what we're doing. We're moving towards that vision of 5 million souls in our city, our state, our nation, and the world. And I want to tell you, I appreciate you. I love you guys. Thank you for helping us and supporting us, staying on Praiser when it was available, and now moving over more to our, our website and, and YouTube and different things. Thank you so much. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I want to serve you, and I want to bless you, and we do pray for you. We pray for our extended family uh, throughout our ministry reach. One other thing I want to say to you before we go on uh, and, and, and just pray for you and, and conclude this podcast, uh, we are in the process of, of seriously praying and considering and modeling a type of house church covering. Uh, as you know, in the past, I've mentioned that in, in the podcast about you, you, know, you going out and starting house churches if you feel led of the Lord and getting out there and preaching the gospel and uh, getting ready for for things to change in our nation concerning churches. We're trying to stay ahead of that and getting prepared for the day when when we cannot assemble pro properly uh, and, and process uh, life as normal. I mean, everything begins to change. You, you're not going to be able to uh, congregate, martial law, so on and so forth. As we get there, we're, we're working on this plan. The other side of that coin is for you that are in Babylonian churches and you want to get out and you feel called, not by me. I can't call you to ministry. Don't ever let a man call you to ministry unless it's been confirmed by the Holy Spirit first. First God speaks to you, then man confirms it if you need that. But um, for those that have been called by God and you feel like you're supposed to do a house church, we're looking at starting a, a house church covering a type of fellowship. Now, I don't want to get into a lot of details because I'm already at the end of this podcast. But if you are interested in some type of covering, I want you to email us. Go to our website. Contact us there. I'll give you my email as well. Contact us and let us know. And we want to start this process of fellowship, communicating, and, and just encouraging. Say, say, what is this, Pastor? Well, first of all, it's not a denomination. I, I, I have no desire of, 
of, of being over anybody in a way that, uh, you know, we're, we're just so dogmatic, we're in charge. It, that, that is not the intention of this. And again, I'll have to make this more plain later. We just want to be a spiritual covering. We want to be a resource center. In other words, I want to be able to counsel you, speak to you, pray for you, uh, give you accountability, give you a type of spiritual covering where you can say, this is my pastor. Uh, who are you connected with, with? Well, we're connected with WOMI and Ignited Church of Livonia, Georgia. Pastor Benjamin and Jennifer Farragut, they're our pastors. They're, they're our type of uh, spiritual overseers, if you will. Again, this is not a denominational thing. We don't want to lord over anybody. What we want to do is help you be accountable. We want to help you be educated. We want to help you uh, be on the cutting edge prophetically. And so uh, these are things that we're working on and we want to train people. And uh, again, that's about as far as I want to go with this. But if you're interested in that, contact us and we'll just develop a relationship and see where we go. We already have people doing this. We have people contacting us for spiritual covering and uh, we want to do that. We want to be a blessing to you. We're not ordaining people. I have no interest in ordaining or licensing people. That is, that is, that is not part of what we're going to do. This is just simply a grassroots uh, organic, if you will, just something birthed out of the Spirit of God and birthed from the Spirit of God to be a blessing to those that feel, man, I'm all alone out here. I feel inadequate. And you hear all the words and the people saying to you, you know, criticizing you and all these different things. We just want to come along and help you. And then there's going to be some that we're going to help, you know, bring to a realization. Maybe you're not called to do this. You know, there are people doing this out of necessity and maybe you're not called to do this. And so, uh, you know, my counsel and, and discernment and praying Again, it may be helping you plant this thing and work it out. It may be me telling you by the Spirit of God and you having confirmation, hey, this isn't for you to do. You can do something else for the kingdom. So I'm looking forward to it. Give us some time. We're praying about it. And uh, we're just looking forward to whatever we can do as the days get darker to produce lighthouses all across America. There will be lighthouses of hope, lighthouses of power, lighthouses of faith, lighthouses of healing, lighthouses of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ all across this nation. Oh, I can see it right now. I see lights all across America, just spots of lights, all of dots everywhere of lights across America. The church is not going down. We may go underground, but our light will be so bright that the nations and the nation will see it and they will come to that light. They will come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not going into a bunker to hide in these last days. We might have to shelter for the, for the storm clouds to pass, but honey, we're going to stand up tall. We're going to stand up bright and we're going to have the glory of Jesus Christ radiating through us just like Moses did when he came out of the glory. Man, I'm telling you, these are our best days. Let me pray for you. I love you so much, and I'm believing the best for you. Father, bless my brother and my sister. Bless their ministry. Bless their families. Bless their marriage. Bless their life with the blessings that come from you, the commanded blessing. I pray for them, Father God, that you would touch them in their coming and their going and their rising and their setting. Father, whatever they do, would you prosper them and keep them in health even as their soul prospers. For those that want to be a part of this ministry, God, put a hook in their jaw and draw them to this ministry so that we can connect and fellowship together. We are praying, Father. We're praying for the best of heaven to be on them, in them, and to operate through them. Bless my brother and sister now with divine health, divine wealth, and the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say amen and amen. Well, uh, again, I love you and I appreciate you. I know you're on my website, but I'm going to say it again, ignitedchurchlife.com. That's how you can contact us. Email pastor at ignitedchurchlife.com. Don't forget you can visit us at 580 East Main Street, Livonia, Georgia, 30553. That, that's also our mailing address or P.O. Box, 303 Livonia, Georgia, 30553. 
Uh, you can get a hold of us through Facebook at Ignited Church Livonia or Twitter at Ignited Kingdom. And you can also get a hold of me on my other email address, and that is WOMI77 at gmail.com. And don't forget YouTube. You can go to our YouTube channel and you can hear some messages there. We have a lot of things planned in the coming days for media, and I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your help to see this thing come to pass because without you being uh, a part of this mission, we really have no mission. And so uh, on behalf of Jennifer and Ignited Church and my family, I love you. I bless you. We are praying for you. And I want to remind you, you don't have any troubles. All you need is faith in God. I love you. Bless you. Thank you for listening to the United Life Now podcast. Join us every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We are located at 580 East Main Street in Livonia, Georgia. Write to us at P.O. Box 303, Livonia, Georgia 30553 or visit our website at ignitedchurchlife.com. Join us on Facebook at Ignited Church Livonia or on Twitter at Ignited Kingdom. To read more of Pastor's words, go to z3news.com or whydoesgodreallyexist.com. Thank you for your prayers and support. They add fuel to our faith. And again, until next time, you don't have any troubles. All you need is faith in God.